Hello everyone, Silver here. Welcome to part 3 of my Free Space Story video series. Before we start, two remarks. First, the usual spoiler warning. As always, this video contains major story points for the Free Space games, so please play the games if you don't want to be spoiled. Second remark, this video contains the canon story of the original Silent Threat expansion campaign for Free Space 1. I know this campaign is seen quite controversially in the Free Space community and I can fully understand why that is. I myself do also prefer the fan created reimagined Silent Threat Reborn campaign, but that one is fan created and as such non canon. And for this video series, I want to focus on the canon story. So I have to go with the original Silent Threat campaign despite all of its shortcomings. Okay, so much for the introduction, let's go on with the story. On March 29th, 2335, the Sheevan Super Destroyer Lucifer was destroyed while entering the Soul System. The consequence was that all jump nodes in the Soul System collapsed due to the explosion of the Lucifer, and Soul was completely isolated from the rest of the galaxy. The remaining Terran forces outside Soul tried desperately to re-establish communications with their homeworld but it was in vain, so they established a provisional GTA government in the Delta Serpentis system. Besides the need to reorganize their command structure, they also had several further problems. First, there were still Sheevan forces in Terran and Vesudan systems that had to be destroyed before any kind of reconstruction could begin. Second, the Terran Vesudan alliance, forged out of necessity during the Great War, was beginning to show some cracks as old prejudices and resentments resurfaced. So while Terran Command was busy cleaning out the remaining Sheevan fleet and keeping the alliance with the Vasudans intact, the commander of the GTD Krios, a destroyer assigned to the Special Operations Command, a side branch of the Galactic Terran Intelligence GTI, noticed some strange events during the missions of his pilots. For example, when a Terran science vessel, originally thought to be destroyed during the first Sheevan attack at Ross 128, showed up during one of their engagements. When the ship was destroyed and the Krios tried to rescue its survivors, an unidentified destroyer showed up to pick up one of the escape ports. All of this led Admiral Scott to investigate these events, a decision that would prove fatal for him, as on May 19th, unidentified GTI forces attacked his destroyer, the Krios, and destroyed it. After that it became apparent that there was a rogue element within the highest ranks of the Galactic Terran Intelligence that planned to overthrow the current GTA government, dissolve the alliance with the Vasudans and destroy the remnants of the Vasudan race. Admiral Scott's investigation forced them into action and so on May 20th the rogue GTI elements began open hostilities against GTA and PVE forces. This led to Terran Command officially disbanding the Galactic Terran Intelligence on May 27th and integrating all remaining loyal GTI forces into its main fleet. On June 1st, a GTA strike team attacked the GTI headquarters on Jotunheim installation and completely wiped out that station. After its destruction, the GTD Hades showed up, a Terran super destroyer created by the GTI as a kind of super weapon to end the Terran Vesudan war. Despite heavy resistance, GTA forces managed to destroy that ship as well, effectively ending the GTI insurgency. Ironically, this event, later called the Hades Rebellion, led to a strengthening of the alliance between Terrans and Vesudans. After that, the alliance focused on driving out the remaining Sheevan forces from their space, which they eventually managed to do. And after that, a decade-long period of reconstruction started. The GTA, however, separated from their political center at Seoul, fractured into several regional blocks. Also somewhere between 2335 and 2345, the Vesudan Emperor disbanded the corrupt Vesudan Parliament and both species developed beam weapon technology like the one found on the Lucifer and started to equip their warships with it. In 2345, the leaders of the Terran blocks and the Vesudan Empire formed a new formal alliance, the Galactic Terran Vesudan Alliance or GTVA. Shortly thereafter, on the 10th anniversary of the first Sheevan attack at Ross 128, the Vesudan Emperor Consul II proposed an unprecedented endeavor to the newly formed General Assembly. 
the construction of a massive battleship that would dwarf even the Sheevan Super Destroyer Lucifer and would be able to repel any future Sheevan threat. At some point after the formation of the GTBA, Operation Templar took place, an attempt to destroy the remaining Hammer of Light forces after they tried to take the Vesudan Admiralty hostage. In 2347, the construction of the ship proposed by Emperor Konsu was finally started. Designated Project Colossus and classified to the highest levels, the construction took place at a secret location and all parties involved were sworn to absolute secrecy. In 2358, the next step of strengthening the political power of the GTBA was taken. With the signing of the Beta Aquilae Convention, or Beta, all Terran blocks were disbanded and all political power centralized in the GTBA institutions, effectively making the GTBA the only legitimate political power in the Terran Vesudan systems. Although the member systems retained the power to govern their local affairs, all major political decisions now had to be taken by the GTBA central government authorities located in Beta Aquilae. This new political system was in general well received despite some mild discontent in some parts of the Terran Vesudan population. In 2366, however, this resentment against the GTBA resulted in a major political change. Admiral Aiken Bosch of the GTVA 6th Fleet in Epsilon Pegasi seceded from the Alliance and formed a movement called the Neo Terran Front. Its goal was to revoke the Beta Aquilae Convention and create a new political system for the Terran population called Neo Terra, in which the glory of Earth and the Terran people was once again restored and the alliance with the Vesudans dissolved in favor of an alliance with the Shebans. Although that last part was only known to the highest ranks within the NTF forces. For the most part, the NTF was seen as a pro Terran and anti Vesudan movement that gained a lot of traction in the systems of Polaris, Sirius, and Regulus. So, shortly after Bosch's initial coup at Polaris, the governments of Regulus and Sirius also joined the Neo Terran Front, seceding from the Galactic Terran Vesudan Alliance. What followed was a prolonged civil war in the GTBA systems, with the main battlegrounds being Deneb, Alpha Centauri and Epsilon Pegasi. And at this point we will stop for now, as we now approach the main events of Free Space 2, which we will have a look at in the next video. Thank you so far for watching, see you again in one of my next videos if you like to, until then, take care and goodbye!